Squarespace launched their Fluid Engine Editor mid-2022, and with it, we got the ability to customize mobile layouts independently of desktop designs. With almost 60% of all website traffic coming from mobile devices, this function is now more important than ever. But because Fluid Engine is relatively new, there is definitely still a few glitches and plenty of room for improvement. We designed in Squarespace so much, so I created this video of little tricks we use all the time to speed up the mobile design process in Fluid Engine and actually avoid a lot of those regular glitches that you see happening. So let's jump into it. Okay, so I am in a Squarespace 7.1 Fluid Engine test site, and I just wanted to show you a few hacks that I've found that make editing in Squarespace 7.1 Fluid Engine on the mobile a lot faster. So we love that we can do separate mobile editing now. That was definitely something really needed from Squarespace, but it's clear that they're still working at a few kinks. And if you spent any time editing in this mobile Fluid Engine view, you will notice that it can get a little bit glitchy. So we do a lot of designing. I've spent a lot of time in this editor and I just wanted to show you a few tips on how to make it a little bit more seamless and actually just working around those glitches and avoiding those glitches until Squarespace sorts them out. So excuse the crazy looking site. I've just been filming a lot of tutorial videos today, but it's perfectly fine for what I wanna show you. So the first thing I would say is when you're moving blocks around in Fluid Engine, use the arrow keys instead of clicking and dragging. And this is especially true for mobile. So I'm gonna hit the G key to turn on the grid. I love having the grid showing. I find it's quite hard to operate without the grid showing. But basically, if you want to move something, instead of clicking and dragging, which I find that a lot of the time has issues on mobile, just use your arrow keys. It's so much faster, it's far less glitchy, and it's especially helpful when you have sections with quite a lot of stuff in them. You can move things really quickly to wherever you want just using the arrow keys. So I highly recommend doing that and just making that a habit to use. You can see how slow and glitchy um, just dragging it around is. Now the second thing to speed up mobile editing that I love is the up and down arrow key. So you don't wanna get this confused with the up and down section. So if you click this arrow, you're actually gonna move your whole section above the section that was above it. So you've moved it one section up. But if you click on a block, you can actually move up and move down as well. So that's gonna swap the position of the two blocks. So I'm going to say move this down. It's gonna bring the image on top and the text below. So this can be really fast if you have a really long section and you wanna get something to the top quickly without having to just like hit the arrow key a hundred times. You can just use these up and down arrow keys. Sometimes again, they can be a little bit glitchy, but I think overall they work really well. Another thing I would recommend doing just as general practice when working in Squarespace is using more sections, even if you don't want the look of a different section. I find that working in smaller chunks and this applies for desktop too, but working in smaller chunks makes things a lot faster. So for example, if you have one page that is just one really long section, it takes a lot longer to move items around if you want to adjust them. You can't just move sections above other sections. If you move one thing at the top, it might glitch something out at the bottom of the section. So I think that just in general, working in more sections is like working in smaller chunks and overall it's less glitchy, but maybe you don't really like the look of all of the different sections and that's fine. You can actually achieve the one page look while still using sections. All you need to do is just keep the background color the same as the section before. So if you've got a white background and then a white background and another white background, it actually doesn't look like sections when you look at the site when you're not in the editor. It just looks like one long page. And if you're finding the spacing between the sections to be too much, you can always reduce that too by clicking edit section and either changing the section height to small or reducing the section padding altogether. So you really can make it look like one long page if that's the look you're going for, but I still would recommend using those sections just so you can work in small chunks and keep things less glitchy and running a bit faster in the back end. You also have the benefit of being able to move the sections around too. So 
if I wanted this section above this section, I can just click this arrow and it will move the whole chunk instead of me having to drag those blocks manually to the top and then drag the other ones down. So if you work smart with your sections, it can actually save you a lot of time. One thing you've probably noticed if you've been working in this fluid engine system for a while now is that when you create designs on desktop and then come into the mobile view, a lot of the time you have a ton of extra space at the bottom of your sections that you need to tidy up. Or, you know, maybe you just want to make stuff smaller on mobile and you've gone and you've sort of compressed everything and made it a bit smaller and you've been left with all of this extra space. And this happens all the time, otherwise I wouldn't be mentioning it. But basically every time I design in a section, I'm left with a huge chunk of space at the bottom. And that's totally fine because we can easily remove it. But my tip for removing this is to not actually use the slider here. In my experience, the slider can be really glitchy especially if your computer's running slow or you have a lot of stuff on your page. Sometimes it gets stuck, sometimes it totally glitches out. So I stay as far away as possible away from this thing and I've just gotten into a habit. I also do this on desktop to avoid any glitchiness, but it definitely happens on mobile more. But whenever I want to reduce any space, I just click edit section, come here to the row count, click inside this box and then I use my arrow keys to just reduce it that way. So again, those arrow keys coming in clutch, it's just much faster and snappier and I avoid any of those dragging glitches. So if you're having that problem, just pretend like this doesn't even exist and just get into a habit, two clicks and use your arrow keys. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you like this video, you'll probably like this one too. So definitely check that out. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next one.